In this concept module, we'll be using image analysis and NDVI to assess vegetation greenness. What are we monitoring on this global map? Let's take a look. You can see there's some dark green colors which have an NDVI value of greater than 0.5 and we have some red values there um, with a very low near zero NDVI. Take a look at the tropical regions. You can see there's some bright green and in the Tropic of Cancer here in Northern Africa you can see some uh, yellow. So we are taking a look at global vegetation greenness. Vegetative greenness can be determined using remote sensing. Red and green are regions with low NDVI, below 0.1, and typically represent barren sand, rock, or snow. While yellow and light green are regions with moderate NDVI, between 0.2 and 0.3, and typically represent shrub and grassland. Dark green are regions with high NDVI, greater than 0.6, and represent tropical or temperate rainforests. How can we determine the vegetative greenness of plants using remote sensing? Let's take a look. We can determine the amount of reflectivity from uh, vegetation by determining how much of the sun's energy is absorbed, reflected, or re-emitted by vegetation. This all depends on the amount of chlorophyll in the plant. Satellites collect the reflected or emitted energy from the vegetation. In the top image there you can see the green is reflected in healthy vegetation and some of the sun's energy is also near infrared and this can also be reflected in healthy vegetation. Let's uh, take a closer look at chlorophyll. In green vegetation, chlorophyll absorbs most of the visible red and blue to make food for the plant, while much of the near infrared is reflected. However, in stressed vegetation, there the image in the bottom right, plants do not make uh, food or very much food, and uh, as a result, they reflect more red and blue and less near infrared. So I've been using this term NDVI, what is it? Well perhaps you know, but in case you don't, it refers to the normalized difference vegetative index. NDVI is a remote sensing method that allows one to display greenness of vegetation. Uh, NDVI compares reflectivity of near infrared and red wavelength bands. Let's take a look at the spectral signature of vegetation. Chlorophyll in plants absorbs visible light from about 0.4 to 0.7 microns. Green leaves strongly reflect near infrared between about 0.7 to 1.1 microns. A graph of the amount of reflection in each wavelength creates a spectral signature for that particular feature. We can determine the NDVI using image analysis. Image analysis uses remote sensing software, whether it's uh, ArcGIS or Envy, uh, to determine uh, the NDVI. And the NDVI is determined using the following formula. Near infrared minus red over near infrared plus red. In the left image there, you can see near infrared is strongly reflected, while the visible uh, has a low reflection. In a healthy vegetation, the NDVI is closer to one, with one being a rainforest. In the right image, near infrared uh, has a weak reflection, and NDVI is closer to zero, representing a stressed plant. So let's compare the spectral signatures of healthy vegetation versus stressed vegetation. In uh, healthy vegetation, you can see the higher near-infrared reflection there between 0.7 to 1.1 and the lower visible reflection between 0.4 and 0.7. While in the stressed vegetation, you can see the near-infrared reflection is lower 
compared to the green vegetation, while the visible reflection is higher. We can apply NDVI in GIS software, as I mentioned before. And by comparing the near-infrared and the red band um, using image analysis between certain dates, we can compare the amount of healthy and or stressed vegetation. This is a pretty cool image here. Uh, on the right there, you can see the world according to uh, near-infrared camera. So we're using remote sensing. Here are a couple of satellite options that we have. Um, one option is advanced very high resolution radiometer. The AVHRR covers a large portions of the Earth. Um, it uh, is fairly frequent and it can be used to identify seasonal and annual changes. The key difference between AVHRR and Landsat 8 is that the resolution for AVHRR is about one kilometer, whereas Landsat 8, it's about 30 meters. Of course, there are other satellite options. So if you're interested in Landsat data from quite a few years ago, you may be using other Landsat satellites, such as Landsat 7. Uh, this is the band designations for Landsat 7. You can see band 1 is for blue, band 2 green, band 3 red, and band 4 near infrared. While Landsat 8 has uh, different bands for blue, green, red, and near infrared. In Landsat 8, band 2 is blue, band 3 is green, band 4 is red, and band 5 is near infrared. For more on Landsat satellites other than 7 and 8, please go ahead and go to the uh, website there in the bottom left. We can apply NDVI to monitor many physical characteristics of the Earth. We can assess agricultural production, desertification, uh, fire production, uh, land cover change, uh, vegetation health, as well as for climate change. This image shows us the average NDVI for early January. You can see that uh, there is very little vegetation in the northern hemisphere because it's winter time and many of the trees in the mid-latitudes have lost their leaves. While in the southern hemisphere you can see that there is a more greenness. However, you can see in the southern hemisphere there are places in Australia that are red, and the reason for that is because the, the, those red regions are uh, desert regions and have very little greenness. In this image, we're looking at uh, NDVI across portions of North America. Um, this is, again, for early January, uh, in this case 2006, and you can see um, in the northern parts of the United States and most of Canada, you can see um, snow and ice are on the ground this particular week. That's the white um, and very little um, vegetative greenness there in states like uh, Nebraska or in um, southern Ohio. Whereas if you go to the Yucatan Peninsula, um, you can see a significant vegetative greenness because the uh, uh, the trees uh, there do not leave, lose their leaves there in uh, January. We can also use NDVI at various scales from global to regional scale. This is an example of looking at NDVI for parts of Syria. You can see we're comparing 2007 when there was significantly more greenness in the northern parts of Syria as compared to 2008 there was significantly less greenness. We can also look at NDVI at uh, the local scale. Um, in these two images, you can see red corresponds to higher crop yields, while blue and green correspond to lower crop yields. There's a series of questions now based on this uh, short uh, lecture, this concept module. Uh, the first question here, what is the normalized difference vegetation index? I'll give you a few seconds and um, go ahead and make a guess before we move on to the next question. 
Here's question two in stressed vegetation. Plants are not making food and reflect more blank and less blank. I'll give you a second to read that question over again and make a answer. By the way, all of the answers to these questions will be in the uh, part two PowerPoint of this concept module. Number three, an NDVI value of 0.7 might be blank, while a value of negative 0.2 might mean blank. The following letter corresponds to green vegetation, A, B, or C. So you really want to look at the microns or the uh, micrometers between 0.7 and 1.1. What are the Landsat 8 bands for blue, green, red, and near infrared? In this image showing an area of crops, red represents blank, while green and blue represent blank. Give you a second there. And the last question. List four real-world applications of NDVI. Again, list four real-world applications of NDVI. Here are some additional resources that I found very helpful as I uh, created this concept module and as I created my local exercise using Landsat data. The uh, last one there, Landsat Globus, this is one way that you can acquire uh, rastered data. Here are the references. If you'd like to see the answers to the mini quiz, go ahead and see part two of this concept module. Thanks a lot for viewing uh, this concept module on NDVI and using image analysis.